The restoration of Great Waterton was complete. Tourists bustled about, eager to see the revival of the old town. Stanley was managing the line well, but Sir Topham Hatt asked Molly to assist with passenger trains. Neville was also assigned to deliver goods for the local merchants. The three engines got on swimmingly. When Molly and Neville first arrived, Stanley was jovial. He always smiled and whistled loudly as he passed. As time went on, Molly noticed a change. Stanley became timid and withdrawn. He didn't speak unless spoken to, and seemed to be almost skittish. Molly decided it best to keep a watchful eye. One morning, Molly was waiting at the platform as Stanley bustled in. Good morning, she said cheerfully. Stanley didn't reply. It was as if he hadn't noticed Molly. He seemed to be looking for something. Stanley, Molly said with a whistle. That did the trick. Stanley jumped. Oh, goodness, I, I didn't see you there, Molly. Uh, doing well, are you? I should be asking you the same thing. Is something the matter? Oh, no, nothing at all, Stanley replied hastily. I, I was just uh, seeing how busy the town is today. Uh, must be off to the water tower. Goodbye. Stanley raced off, leaving a perplexed Molly behind. I don't understand it, she said to Neville that afternoon. He's not the same Stanley who first arrived on the island. I think something's up. Oh, I don't know, Neville answered rather dismissively. Perhaps he's just adjusting to his new routine. I'm sure running a busy branch line comes with stress. Molly wasn't convinced, but said no more as the two engines went back to work. Neville was late returning to Great Waterton that night. He had to collect building materials from the docks, but the boat from the mainland was delayed. By the time he arrived, darkness had fallen and mist hung in the air. He was about to shunt his trucks away when a sound piqued his attention. Stanley was shuffling up and down in and out of the sidings. What's he doing awake? Neville thought. He moved slowly towards the yard, trying to see through the mist, when suddenly, bump! Stanley appeared from the mist and collided with him. Ouch! Neville cried. N Neville? gasped Stanley. Oh dear, I'm sorry if I woke you. Neville hesitated. In the distance, he thought he could hear a slow puffing sound. What on earth are you doing? he said, turning back to Stanley. I, oh, well, I, I, I thought I'd forgotten to, to tidy some of the trucks for you, stuttered Stanley. Silly me, looks like I did. I'm going back to my shed now. Good night. Stanley shot off into the mist. Neville was speechless. He told Molly everything next morning. And you say you heard another engine? She quizzed. That can't be right. It certainly sounded like another engine, frowned Neville. But Stanley was the only one working this line when we arrived. That we know of, said Molly. I know an engine who might have an answer. Later that afternoon, Molly was at the junction as Thomas bustled in. Hello, Molly, he smiled. How are things at Great Waterton? Not letting my hard work go to waste, are you? Certainly not, chuckled Molly. Although, there is one thing I need to ask you. She explained about Stanley's strange behavior and Neville's encounter. 
I'm sorry, Molly, replied Thomas. There were no engines left when I found Great Waterton. We did find a rusted old tender at the platform, but no sign of an engine. Where is the tender now? Molly asked. Who knows, said Thomas. At the scrapyard, I reckon. No use for it now, sadly. Maybe that's what Stanley's looking for, cried Molly. I must talk to him. Thank you, Thomas. Molly raced away with her passengers. She tried to find Stanley all day, but to no avail. She made a plan, one which could only happen at night. When darkness fell, Molly crept towards Stanley's shed. The mist hung low again, and everything looked spooky. She wished Neville was coming with her, but he'd been called away to collect a special load. She bravely crept closer and closer, then stopped dead in her tracks. There was Stanley in his shed, and a very old, rusted engine sat beside him. It had an ominous look on its face. Molly wasn't sure if it was the mist, but it was as if she could see right through it. Stanley was pale and quivering as the engine stared him down. Where is it? groaned the engine. I don't know, cried Stanley. I've been searching everywhere. Where is it? The engine repeated in a loud growl. I don't know, Stanley wailed, almost in tears. But I promise I'll... Stanley! Molly rushed forwards. Stanley looked even more afraid now. What on earth is going on? And who is this? She demanded, eyeing the old engine. Before Stanley could say anything, the old engine began to crawl forwards, its rusted wheels groaning. Molly winced as the engine drew near. Where is it? demanded the engine, louder than ever. I don't know what you're looking for, Molly snapped, trying to sound brave. But you're not welcome here. Leave Stanley alone and... Everything stopped as a whistle cut through the air. It was Neville. He was pushing a flatbed with the old tender perched atop it. Neville jumped and braked hard when he saw the old engine. To Molly's surprise, the grimace on the engine's face curled into a smile, and its eyes began twinkling. You found it. It drawled happily. Thank you. Without another word, the engine crept slowly towards the flatbed and disappeared into the mist. Out of Neville's cab stepped Sir Topham Hatt, who was most surprised. Where did you find that tender? Stanley gasped. It was mistakenly taken to the scrapyards when the restoration began, replied Sir Topham Hatt. I had asked that it remain here in honor of him. But who is he, sir? asked Neville. An engine who once worked this line, replied Sir Topham Hatt. A man who lived in the village told me of its legend. When the line was forced to close, the engine was left behind in hopes that the villagers could find him a new home. I am told that when they returned to rescue him, he was gone. Only the tender remained. It's believed scrap merchants found him, took him to pieces, and... Sir Topham Hatt paused to compose himself. That was that. Many of the surrounding villages claimed they heard whistles and steam after the line closed, but there was never an engine to be found. It seems that engine has been visiting you, Stanley. Everyone turned back to Stanley, who now looked miserable. I was afraid of him, he sighed. I thought he was going to hurt me. 
when all he wanted was his tender. To be a complete engine again. But you tried to help him, Stanley, Molly smiled. You showed him kindness, and that speaks volumes about the engine you are. Hear, hear, cheered Neville. For the first time in days, Stanley smiled. Sir Topham had commissioned a monument at the center of Great Waterton Square. The old tender sat on a plinth with a plaque to commemorate the legend of the old engine. The other engines can see it from the platform. They all give cheerful whistles as they pass by, but no one whistles louder or longer than Stanley.